Hey, what's up, guys? John here. Well, everyone's talking about what's happening in Israel. Not many people are talking about what's happening in the U.S. banking system. What's happening now is going to be completely shocking. Biden came out this morning, 5 a.m., and made a pretty big statement. One of the key things I've asked the council to tackle are the unfair fees known as junk fees, those hidden charges that companies sneak into your bill to make you pay more because they can. These junk fees can add up hundreds of dollars weighing down family budgets and making it harder to pay family bills. These junk fees may not matter to the wealthy, but they sure matter to working folks in homes like the one I grew up in. But this statement is on the back of 10 other things that are happening that are ultimately going to put more pressure on banks to the capacity in which I don't think they're going to be able to hold on. In fact, I think we're going to be walking into a series of bank failures and possibly bank runs, and this is gonna take America by storm. So I'm gonna break this down for you. I'm gonna show you what's actually happening with verifiable facts so you can position yourself, prepare yourself and your family for some pretty crazy times ahead. Now I know since 2020, it's been one crazy situation after the next, but trust me when I tell you, this is, this is where it's gonna to start to really, really happen. We haven't seen anything yet. Next couple of years, things are gonna get real in this country and the world. I'll break it down for you. Hit the like button, YouTube will share the content, educate more people about what's really going on. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you. We'd love to give you a free strategy session if you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, do not let it sit there. Because what's ultimately gonna happen as these banks start to really buckle and fear starts to hit this market, people with bad credit and average credit scores are gonna have a near impossible time getting loans. People with great credit are gonna be better positioned to be able to get financing, I believe be able to pick up and purchase distressed real estate, pick up opportunities that many people won't be able to buy. If you look at 2008, 2009, 2000, 2010, what happened? Banks tightened up lending on people with bad and average credit scores. Look it up. And if you'd like great credit, we'd love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. Click the link below to schedule a free strategy session. Take a look at this. So this morning, today, wholesale inflation rose 0.5%. And they now say that the Fed's target of 2% annual inflation does not expect to get there for several years. Remember they said it was transitory? Several years now. It's never getting there. It'll never get to 2%. I promise you that it's not going to happen. Because why? They're going to continue printing and printing and printing more money. Oil prices are going to continue to rise as we start to transition into you know, clean energy. Everything is going to be inflationary. All of these costs are going to get pushed on to consumers. We're not going to 2%. We're probably going to 10%, like real 10%, where they say 10%, but you know consumers are probably feeling 30% or 40%, which is probably not far off from where many people are feeling right now. But look at this. Biden today, he came out and said that he announces a new effort to crack down on tens of billions in junk fees. And who are, uh, who are the ones that are uh, issuing these junk fees? Well, it's banks. They're going after banks. Big banks, they say, cannot charge these massive fees or trap consumers. The proposal is part of the administration's overreaching effort to increase competition in industries, right? Well, what he's really saying, uh, what they are really saying, is not to increase competition, but they are trying to dethrone many of these banks. They're trying to push many of these banks uh, into financial hardship. You know, maybe you don't believe me. Well, look at this. So this came out CNN, right? Newly unveiled banking regulations wouldn't have prevented this year's U.S. banking failures, but banks will no longer be able to act as their own risk managers. Under the new rules, banks with 100 billion or more in assets won't be able to use their own models to determine the risk they've undertaken on loans and other activities. Their risk assessments have been the basis for informing how much capital they need to hold up on the baseline requirements. Now, think about this. Banks before, they were able to loan and lend money based on their own levels of risk. That's why a lot of regional banks, if you look at who they're lending money to, mainly it's small businesses, you know, it's the average everyday American, right? But these bigger banks, they try to you know, work with private clients, they try to work uh, and loan different products, they had different loan programs. So when they start to move in, and they start to change the requirements, this is gonna change banking. This is gonna change lending. And so they are doing something unique, right? So they're accounting for unrealized gains and losses. Banks will be required to factor in unrealized losses or gains on securities in the portfolio. Silicon Valley Bank accumulated a lot of paper losses or unrealized losses from holding bonds while the Fed hiked interest rates. Generally, interest rates on bonds go up as the Fed hikes, which leads to lower bond prices. Eventually, SVB had to sell the bonds, which meant that it had to realize the loss but it did not need to hold capital to protect depositors from these losses. Now, many people might say, well, they didn't need to hold capital. That's irresponsible, Silicon Valley Bank. Well, 
if you look at this, our banks reserved uh, reserve requirements still zero. Federal Reserve Board reduced banking reserve requirements to zero in March of 2020. So all the banks were operating in this very principle where you know they had zero reserve requirements. And since that at that time, banks in the United States have not been required to actually hold any deposit or money in the bank, making it a flawed system, right? So when you look at these situations, you're like, okay, well, maybe we're gonna start to see some banks, you know, maybe walk into some problems as they start to, you know, quote unquote, go after these banks to protect consumers. And they do that as well as they're changing the regulations on these banks, uh, or the requirements rather. This is happening. So higher loan losses provisions demonstrate credit quality concerns. This came out about five days ago. Uh, with the Federal Reserve, the Fed's dramatic cycle of monetary tightening still not over and the threat of the U.S. entering recession later this year or in 2024 highly credible, U.S. banks continue to allocate even greater provisions to address potential loan losses. In doing so, there's a widespread acknowledgement that further credit deterioration is coming. The largest American banks nonetheless reported strong earnings for the second quarter demonstrating how beneficial higher interest rates have proven in bolstering lending activities and net interest margins but the expiration of the raft of government's backed measures that supported vulnerable households and businesses during the pandemic threatening a seismic wave of loan defaults. Lenders are becoming increasingly concerned about how adversely those rising interest rates are impacting borrowers and central banks continue to struggle to bring inflation down. So what does this mean? Tighter lending standards, right? Banks are gonna to start to really, really tighten up especially as they look at consumers. Consumers, this is personal savings rate. Consumers are in worse shape today than they've been in in a very, very, very long time. So they have less money today than they did you know, back then. So you start to, you know, during the GFC. So you start to look at this situation and you're like, okay, well, how bad is it really? Well, credit card and car loan defaults hit now a 10 year high, 10 year high. And not to mention, this came out September 4th, October 1st, you had 44 million Americans owe money for student loans. So this data has not yet been factored in to everything that banks are gonna be going through soon. And as this is all happening, you see what's going on with oil prices. No matter how much we want it to be otherwise, more than 80% of energy used by the world economy takes the form of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. It will be the time of Russia's incursion of Ukraine in 2022 that the commodity price has started rising on the eve of the invasion, the cost of a bas basket of commodities already up over 50% from the year before, right? So you start to look at this situation, and this came out today. When the conflict began, oil prices spiked to $100 a barrel. On economists were quick to realize that the potential threat of the inflation front, they noted this together with the hindrance to economic growth that might be on the cards somewhat alarmingly, JP Morgan Chase warned that at the time the event of the prices could top $150, barrel, $150 a barrel and the global economy might be in trouble and saying inflation could fly up to 7%. Right now they're saying it's 3.5%, right? That's what they're basically saying. So they're saying that their numbers would basically double, right? So you can just imagine what the actual numbers would be for consumers. Mortgage rates right now, if you have average, the average credit score in America is a 698. So you're looking at about 8.6% uh, for a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. So if you have credit scores slightly above the average, it's 7.4%, 7.452%. So you just start to look at this. A lot of consumers are gonna be in really, really big trouble. And a lot of people right now are looking at the cost of living and saying, you know what, I wanna buy a home, I need to buy. But what they're doing is they're moving into these adjustable rate mortgages to make the payments work. Maybe they'll save a quarter point doing this. But what, they, what they're not realizing is that they're, they might not see a Fed pivot by the time they have to refinance because they're now saying it's gonna take several years. A lot of people that bought these properties, you know, at 5%, 6% mortgages thinking that that was way too high. They needed to get an adjustable and they'll refinance at 2.5% or 3%. What's gonna happen if interest rates don't go back down and in fact, inflation continues to run rampant and the cost of the world gets much, much worse and we begin to see more and more layoffs as this economy starts to fall apart. Well, many people I believe are gonna to turn to renting their home if they can do so to profit or they're gonna give the keys back to the bank. But I saw this article and I thought this was very interesting because this all ties back to America, it all ties back to the banking system and it all ties back to what the future is actually gonna look like. And you can see these really, really big names that everybody knows 
and you can see that this is probably going to be something that is worth paying attention to. So reforming the World Bank's approach to risk could unlock $190 billion in addition, additional urgently needed lending for developing countries without jeopardizing its AAA credit rating. The study, carried out by the international finance analytics firm Risk Control, found that the bank's two main lending arms, the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development and the International Development Association have significant headrooms to boost lending. And who are they going to lend it to? Is it going to be U.S. consumers? No. In fact, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be lending and easing the bank's strict capital adequacy framework could free up hundreds of billions in additional lending to combat this, to combat this change right here, right? Uh, the report to be published early Wednesday comes to the United States, China, over the World Bank shareholders to meet in Morocco next month. And they are going to be lending this money. They're going to be lending this money to poor countries, which could boost lending from $21 billion to $27 billion. And they go on to say that, you know, this is probably going to be a, somewhere around $2.4 trillion. That's how much they need per year, $2.4 trillion. So when they say uh, this, they say some experts argue. So um, when they say that they need to boost lending and rather than, you know, the U.S. banking system is going to go through a really big contraction. And so as America has less access to money, even though we have $17 trillion in outstanding consumer debt and we have more debt than we've ever had before and a higher cost of living than we've ever had before. And we're essentially in the silent depression. And when we consider the fact of wages today versus cost of living, it's never been worse. And so as this is happening, they basically want to say we need to start to fund all these other countries. We're already seeing it right now. If you look at, you know, diff definitions of, you know, look at for here, for example, Ukraine, they're considering another 100 billion here, right? This is three days ago. Uh, they're now considering 8 billion for uh, Israel, right? So uh, we're already moving in this direction, but all they're going to do is basically repackage, you know, who deserves this money. So that's where we're at. And, uh, you, you know, many people would say we're in a recession. Some people wouldn't. You know, they say that, uh, you know, Wikipedia, for example, takes the cue from them, right, and redefines this word. So you tell me, do you think we're walking into a situation where we're going to start to see defaults happen left, right, and center as they continue to keep interest rates higher for longer? All that's going to do is tighten bank lending. And as that begins to happen, a lot of wealth is going to be going everywhere else except here. What do you think? Drop it below. Let's have a conversation about it. I think what we're going to start to see is that a lot of people in 2024 and 2025 start to sell off a lot of real estate. A lot of people are going to start selling businesses, closing down businesses. Uh, so if you are an entrepreneur, you're a business person, I'm not saying this to scare you, but I'm saying this to prepare you. You know, put yourself in a really good position so that when this happens, you can make smart moves in a crazy world to give yourself options. In my, my belief, money equals options. Options equals wealth. That's the new normal. Drop it below, hit the like button. If you wanna fix your credit, we'd love to give you a free consultation. Click the link in the description. I'll catch you guys in the next video.